<laughs> so <laughs> before I begin my commentary today, I want to give a quick shout out to Craig. Craig is a boy that my daughter met on the Disney cruise. Craig and Hope did not become friends. Like Craig and Hope did not uh, you know, connect in any way. Uh, Craig wasn't particularly nice to her. He was cold and he was distant. And, you know, when things weren't going her way, he would pile on. Well, Craig found out that I have a decent sized YouTube channel. And now he would like to have a shout out. Instead of a shout out, Craig, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to give you a life lesson. It's a good thing not to be a douchebag. It's a good thing to be nice to people, even if other guys aren't. It's uh, it's not a good thing to pile on, and, and this is the weakest form of human behavior. So, rather than a shout out, there's your life lesson. I hope it worked out for you, douchebag. I hope it's everything you thought it would be. <laughs> I'm on Team Hope, not Team Craig. Alright, I hope you didn't mind that too much. I, it's a little bit self-indulgent for me to do that, but I, oh, I'm a dad. Sometimes I want to do that. So, uh, back on topic. I played against the Wicked Elite. Uh, the Wicked Elite is Jay Nasty, Wicked Shrapnel, and their friends. Uh, they're really strong players. And originally they had a game they wanted to play against Wings of Redemption. And then Wings of Redemption decided that he didn't want to play. So I picked up the, the gauntlet. <laughs> and from there, uh, my team was stacked with the best pros in the world. Right? The, I, it would be hard to come up with a better six-man team on planet Earth that still included me. So, uh, um, you know, that, that's how it was. I don't, we won. We won. Uh, we won the first map, we lost the second map, and then we won the third. Uh, it was surprising to a lot of people, including me actually, how close it was. Um, the, the second map in particular where they won, they had this tactic of using tack inserts and C4s and RPGs even. <laughs> I died to an RPG. That, uh, that was just unbeatable. What happened was the Wicked Elite, they were scrimming against another team and someone did to them what they did to us. And it was like, wow. This is a tactic that just on hard hat in particular that works super super well. That when you set up, you know, these tech inserts just around the corner, own A B, then uh, you know, you're you're really hard to get out of that slot. And um, they even did a shout out. I wish I could remember who it to who it was to to the team that uh, that taught them how to play hard hat domination. So when we went up against them, they they were just ready, man. They seemed like they'd keep spawning. There were times that you know I would get like three kills in a row against the three the same guy. Uh, it was actually Wicked Shrapnel, who was also on a bad connection. I'll talk about that in a second. And. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, it, the, the whole point of killing a guy in an objective game is to own the section of the map that he was in. And if he has a tank insert right around the corner, you're just wasting your time, Woody. You know, like you're not getting map control unless you push around into his corner and destroy that tank insert. And, uh, you know, that that was the deal. So um, lessons learned. Lessons learned. First off, they were a pretty strong team, right? They were a solid group. Um, they were they were nice to play against and stuff. So there's no uh, hard feelings or anything. Um I think that the pub stars, the best pub guys, have MLG level shots. Uh, I think that MLG guys have some tactics and some call outs that work differently. Typically what a pub star does is he, um, uh, he manages to find the parts of the map that have the most traffic and then just goes crazy in that part of the map. Like that's the deal. They're just chasing spawns all game. They're, uh, they're finding how to get a lot of people and then they win gunfight after gunfight after gunfight by being the guy that's on the side, flanking, having cover, stuff like that. That's what a pub star does. What a pro does is he's playing the objective and he's forcing you into areas of the map that you don't want to be. You know, if they're playing domination like they did last year in Black Ops, they're owning, you know, the flags that uh, that you wish you owned. They're making you spawn like lower altitude wise on the map, which is usually the disadvantaged side. Um, they're, you know, they're they're owning the map. That's what pros do. And they're working with each other. They're calling each other out and, um, and, and finding ways to win games. So, um, once you take these pub stars, give them a couple weeks to practice, they find tactics, they communicate with each other, and they started competing with pros. Um, another thing that came to, like, I, I used to think that the pros should play under a rule set that's very close to pub matches, and now, like, a, the, I don't think tech inserts should be in competitive matches. Like, you know, after seeing, you know, just how powerful they are and how well they work, it's, uh, it's altered my opinion. Like, you know, the pros still need to play under a modified rule set, I think. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing kill streaks. I wouldn't mind seeing something like Specialist, which doesn't exist in Black Ops 2. But, uh, 
Um, you know, how exciting would it be for someone to like call in a chopper or something, you know, like get a seven kill streak and do some work and like that would be really neat to me. But uh, um, I, you know, there are some things in pub matches that I think just don't translate well when you've got like all six guys using them and you know, it, it can be a little overpowered. So, and, and attack inserts is really what I'm thinking of. C4s, I wouldn't mind seeing that. You know, we've, we've played competitive matches with C4s before, and I think they're kind of fun. So, uh, so that's that. I've got to pick up my C4 skills. I think they're pretty uh, powerful, and I don't really use them. But uh, that's just me. Uh, I did want to make a quick note about how well I played, which is not very. <laughs> um, I... I uh, I hate to be like Captain Excuse here. Nobody likes that. But uh, I lost a lot of gunfights. And part of it was, you know, the people I'm playing were very good. But it was also because I spent a lot of time on a two bar. I was uploading to Twitch. And that was one stream. And I was uploading in a 480p. And then I was uploading again in 780p. And I don't know if you've ever played like on a two bar connection while you're uploading files uh, against strong players who are trying their hardest. But... It's hard to look good. Uh, you know, I'm not that self-conscious about it anymore because, like, I've live streamed enough that, like, look, scores posted, right? I, when I play, you know, against my subs and stuff, I'm, uh, you know, better than average, better than most, but I'm not optic scumpy either. And uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, last night against the best, when I was on a two bar, uh, I didn't finish all that high. It is, you know, what are you gonna do? Who cares? So. Uh, um, I know. I think Wicked Shrapnel had the same thing. I don't know if he was also streaming it, but he was flickering between a two and a three bar like I was, and uh, it also made it hard for him to do well. That's look. You've probably been there. So um, good times. The the Wicked Elite were a bunch of nice guys. You know, they all played well. They were respectful. They were joking. Uh, when it came to uh, playing a game type that they knew they had a really they weren't going to win. This is the CTF Dom thing I'm talking about. Then, uh, you know, they were like, all right, let's get this out of the way. Let's play. It is what it is. We're not CTF guys. And uh, and they were good sports about it. And then you know, when we lost Hard Hat, I, I'm not sure that, like, you know, as a team, <laughs> we were the same level of sports. But, you know, when you have, like, your sense of self-worth partly built up by how good you are at the game, then losses are super difficult to, to take. And uh, I, I think that's what happened when we lost Hard Hat. It was just like, man, you know, let's run it again. Let's switch spawns. Let's do our thing. And uh, we ran it again. They were they were good sports about that, too. And they're they're really hard to beat. <laughs> they're, they're, they're super strong. So... It was fun. Uh, who won? My team won. Uh, but the uh, the pub guys represented themselves well and showed that, uh, you know, at least with some of the skill sets that involve being good at Call of Duty, they are right there with uh, with some of the strongest players in the world. So, so that's how it went. We won maps one and three. They won maps two, and that was that. I had I was going to challenge those guys to like you know lose or pay some money to the winner's favorite charity, but um, it didn't work out. You know, like, what happened was I forgot. You know, and it, <laughs> when I start live streaming, all the tech stuff can get me a little bit stressed, and and I was switching from like a PKA display and sound setup to a like a streaming Xbox Live you know setup. And uh, somewhere in that chaos, I forgot to challenge Jay Nasty to part with a little bit of his YouTube money. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, it was a fun match and, uh, you know, good times. Good times. So I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. I made this partly because I thought a lot of people would ask who ended up winning the thing. And now you know. So uh, enjoy your day. <laughs> All right, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to click like. If you're new around here and you like it, you can click subscribe in the top right. Here's two vids you may have missed. Have a good day.